a point. Um, so, yeah, so I've always tried to include elements of, of activities that there are no wrong answers. And I'd like to share some of those with you today. My mouse has disappeared. Hang on one second. For some reason, I can't move on my slide. And this is frustrating because we practiced it the other day. Uh -huh. You okay? If you want, Teresa, we can um, we can share the slides. If you could, that would be fantastic because I don't know why it's not working. Sure. Yes. Uh, let me just open that up. Uh, Apologies, everyone. We've been having some technical difficulties this morning. I also had a power cut, so had to run to a friend's house to do the session and had a power cut here just before we started. So oh, it'll be all right on the night, as they say. <laughs> Hang on two seconds. I'm just opening it up. And thank you very much. Thank you very much, everyone, for your patience. Whilst we're looking, whilst we're waiting, um, it's wonderful to see so many of you joining from around the world. Um, hopefully you'll come away with some ideas that you can use in your lessons today, if it's very early in the morning for you, or, or use the ideas on Monday, unless you have class over the weekend as well. Hmm. Oh, okay. okay. So thank you very much. Paul is going to be my fabulous assistant, and I'll be going, next slide, please, Paul. Okay, so this is the plan for the session today. Um, in the pre-session survey that I sent out, I included the first five activities to see if these were sort, the sorts of activities that you were using in your lessons anyway. And only five, uh, 19 people said that they had tried all five of the activities so hopefully you'll come away with something new i've added in an, an extra couple of activities as well um, just so that you've got some ideas to use in your lessons one thing i will say is that all of these are speaking activities you can include elements of writing in them as well but really they're aimed to be speaking activities um, but we'll be using the chat quite a lot to, to kind of mirror what the activities would be doing. Next slide, please, Paul. Okay, so I'd like to start off with a story. Jackie is a teacher who lives in Scotland, where it's often icy and cold in the winter. Okay, next slide, please. Have a look at these questions and um, choose one and pop an idea in the chat. What do you think Jackie looks like? What does she wear to work? How old is she? Tell us more about her job. What type of teacher is she? What type of school does she work in? What age are the students she works with? What about the area where she lives? Is it a town, a city, the countryside? What can she see on her way to work? And what does she like about the area she lives in? Okay, so 30 seconds. Write an idea for one of those questions in the chat. Oh, Datto, thank you. She's very nice and friendly. I'm hoping that was about Jackie. <laughs> She's young, lively, she works with kids, she lives in a small town, she wears casual clothes at work, fantastic. My apologies as well if I say, if I pronounce anybody's name wrong when I'm reading out the comments. Jasmine, lovely to see you, she's tall, she wears wonderful overalls, she wears colourful overalls to go to work. She's around 45 years old, excellent. Amir, uh, medium height, slender, blonde, works in public primary school, calf length skirt and boots, I'm going to whiz through some of them, about 30, friendly. Uh, she's 35. She's a very dedicated teacher who's constantly developing her skills. 
oh, that fantastic, this looks amazing, standing stones looming out of the sea mist as she walks on hurriedly by on her way to the small school. <gasps> this is fantastic. Oh, okay, let's hear the next part of the story. Next slide, please, Paul. So one day when she was driving to work, there had been an accident. So she had to take a different route. But unfortunately, she got lost. Okay, next slide. So again, we can get the students to think about some of these different aspects of the story that haven't been explicitly given. Okay, so thinking about the type of car, what does she do while she's driving? Is she listening to the radio, listening to a podcast? Is she kind of thinking about the day ahead or planning her shopping list? Is she a good driver? How do you know? And then this accident, this event, all we've said is that there had been an accident, but who was involved? Why had it occurred? What could Jackie see as she got near? And then thinking more about the location. So where was she when she gets lost? Is she in the city centre and she doesn't recognise any of the buildings? Or maybe she's had to take a, a trip out of the town or to find a different route and she's in the middle of the countryside. And finally, as well, thinking about how she might feel at that moment. OK, I'm sure that we've all been in situations where, you know, we haven't felt very comfortable. Um, so getting students to think about people's emotions as well can also help to build their, their empathy. OK, uh, I'm not going to have time to read through all the fantastic comments coming in, uh, but I will hopefully be able to access the chat afterwards and keep an eye on them. Okay, next slide, please. So, Jackie's lost, but she saw someone and she decided to stop and ask for directions. Okay, next slide. So again, we've got this unknown person. This person doesn't even have a name. Um, so what do they look like? What are they wearing? What are they doing when Jackie sees them? And, you know, another question you might think about here is why does she ask that person for help? Is there nobody else around? Does that person look particularly knowledgeable? Ah, oh, we've got that she saw a policeman, a very handsome man. I would probably ask a policeman for, for advice if I lost. So thank you for that idea. And then getting them to think as well more about this situation. So what's the conversation like? Is the person able to help Jackie? How far is she from school? You know, maybe she's got completely lost and has ended up miles away. Maybe the school is just around the corner and she didn't realise. And does the person say anyone else? Fantastic. So, so much, so many ideas coming up in the chat here. Uh, a mysterious man wearing a hat. Mm, intriguing, very good. Um, and this is really what the idea is, that students can be so creative because they don't need to worry that their answer is incorrect. There are no wrong answers. Um, and so it's really empowering for them to be able to think creatively and imagine the person, the situation, the place, and not have to worry about something being incorrect. Okay, last part of the story. So then, very simply, to get them really running wild with their imagination, what happens next? So they've built this character of Jackie in their mind, they've imagined the location, the accident perhaps is important to the story, perhaps not. Now Jackie's in this situation where she's lost, she's found someone to ask for directions, but what happens? OK, and again, just getting students to to be creative. Um, I think sometimes teens can feel a little confined when they're in mainstream education. You know, the, the mainstream education can sometimes be quite rigid in terms of what the students need to produce and the language they're expected to use and the ideas as well sometimes that they're expected to share with other people. So an activity like this is something that really gets them using their imagination. And yet, Naveen says using imagination is interesting. I really think it is. Okay, moving on to the next activity. 
So um, one thing I forgot to mention at the beginning, obviously I've got seven activities to get through in this session. So I'm gonna be going quite fast paced, uh, but there is a handout as Paul mentioned, and that has uh, descriptions of the activities and you can obviously contact me if you have any questions. Okay, but I have got, I've got a similar image, but there are a few differences in my image. So I'm going to tell you something about my picture um, and feel free to pop in the chat, how is it different? Okay, so in my picture, there's a woman and she's wearing a blue hat. I'm gonna keep reading them so that we can keep the pace going, but normally, obviously, I would wait for the students to respond, give them time to kind of discuss with a partner. Excellent, lots of yellow hats coming in. Or orange, yep, depending on what you can see. Okay, uh, in my picture, there's a small brown dog. And, in my picture, in the background, there are lots of tall buildings. Excellent. We've got that it's a black dog, it's big, fantastic. There's a landscape, fantastic, excellent. I'm going to tell you a secret. I haven't got a copy of the picture. OK, this is an activity that I love doing with the students because I feel that, again, it just gets them to use more variety of language and gets them to listen to their partners as well. So I would put students in pairs, give them the same image and have one person make a sentence about the image that's false. And the other person has to respond and say what the true sentence is. OK, so we'll try a quick example if we can jump to the next slide. So in the chat, pop me a sentence, a false sentence about this picture. I think as well, students often have to do a lot of describing of pictures when they're um, doing exams and things. And so this puts a different spin on it so that they don't get bored of doing the same thing. Okay, so uh, in my picture, there are two men and a woman. In my picture, they, are, they aren't they are cooking, they're looking at a camera. Um, in my picture, they aren't in the countryside, they're in the city. Um, in my picture, there's probably a photographer and a couple, but he isn't taking pictures of them. He's showing them the pictures that they've taken. Fantastic. Yeah, um, in my picture, I don't know if the people look particularly happy. They look very concentrated. Um, fantastic. Okay, and yeah, in my picture, the man on the right is holding the camera, not the woman in the middle. Okay. Right, we're going to do one more. I'm not going to change the slide just yet because we're going to do one more simple activity like this. OK, so I'm going to tell you about another picture now. Um, OK, so in my picture, there's a woman running down some stairs. She's wearing bright pink leggings and an orange top. The stairs she's running on a grey concrete and there's some bits of rubbish on them. At the top of the stairs, I can see some trees and a family walking. OK, so the next slide, please, Paul. So how was my description of this picture different? If you want to write a quick idea in the chat. So this is kind of moving on from the next stage. In the, in the previous stage, both students could see the picture. They were both looking at it. One was talking, making a sentence. The other one was responding. But you can make it um, a longer turn by having one student describe a picture incorrectly and then showing the part the picture to their partner and their partner has to remember and correct what was wrong okay um and i think that that's a good way of doing it it gives the student who is describing the picture a longer turn so it gets them kind of used 
to talking for more time. But again, because they can invent the the language, the, the sentences, they don't have to worry so much like, oh, I can't remember the word for jogging. Oh, she's walking. She's carrying her shopping. She's talking on the phone. You know, they can use other language to fill those gaps. And then when they do the activity where their partner describes what was incorrect about the picture, that's an opportunity then for the teacher to be monitoring, to be listening in for any vocabulary that they might need. Great to know that you're, you're listening to you're listening so carefully, so there's no family, she's going up the stairs, the stairs are colorful, fantastic. Okay, right, let's jump on to another activity then. So next slide please, Paul. Um, I love doing prediction activities with the students as well, because I think, again, that when you're predicting something, you, you want to have a, an idea, but it doesn't matter if it's correct or incorrect. All you're worried about is getting the students using the language, um, and then there's another stage where you can find out the truth. OK, so the way that I would use prediction activities in class, there are lots of different activities. I'll share a couple with you today. One way is to divide the students into groups. And then you say, OK, group A, I want you to make predictions about group B. And group B, you make predictions about group A. OK, and as you can see here, this is an activity that you can use with different grammar points. So, for example, present perfect or thinking about the future. Um, or you could use it for topics like hobbies and interests. OK, so group A get together, they're doing the present perfect and they, they chat. So they say, OK, I think all of them have uh, eaten pizza. Uh, but only one of them has traveled to the United States and probably most of them have played football at some point. OK, but obviously this is a much longer discussion. You know, they're trying to make predictions that they have a chance of getting correct. So when they've written their sentences about the, the predictions, they then turn those sentences into questions. OK, so the question for number one, have you ever eaten pizza? Have you ever been to the United States? Have you ever played football? And then the next stage is obviously that they work together with group B. And there's this interview moment where they ask each other the questions. They're keeping a note of the answers so that they can see whether their predictions are correct or not. OK, so again, this is a really lovely activity for bringing, I, I love what Naveen says here, the spirit of enthusiasm. Um, I think it's true that students do enjoy that opportunity to work together. Um, and I think as well that this activity is quite supportive for mixed level groups. Um, so, you know, maybe somebody's got an idea about the vocabulary, but they're not sure about the grammatical structure. So their group can help them to make that sentence. Um, so let's have a very quick try. Um, obviously, we can't do it about each other, so you can make some predictions about me. So Teresa has never da 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 at the weekend. Teresa loves da da da, and if she could live anywhere, she would. Okay, so make a prediction, and then write the question in the chat, and I'll attempt to answer them. Uh, Floriana, yes, I have been to Italy, and I'm going again soon. I love Italy. Uh, yes, I am a cat lover, not just at weekends. Um, I often cat sit, friends. Oksana, yep, I, I do love walking. It's true, I have never been to Djibouti, Ahmed. Um, it's on, I'd love to travel everywhere. I, I've also never visited Ukraine. Um, mm -mm -mm. Do you like ice cream? I love ice cream. At the weekend, uh, I love to eat ice cream. OK, so we've got the idea that you've created these predictions about me and then there's the interview stage. And then obviously the final stage is a feedback moment where each group reports on what they predicted and then also what they found out 
about their classmates. And so this, again, it's a really lovely way to build rapport within the class. It's a nice way to, for learners to find out things about each other. Um, and as I say, no wrong answers at the beginning because they're just making these predictions. Okay, so next slide, please, Paul. It's wonderful having an assistant. I can have a hands-free day. Okay, so the next activity is a character build. And this is something that I always started with my young learners. So when we were doing body parts, um, I would, we would create a monster on the board. So I would say to the students, okay, how many legs does he have? And he has seven legs, so on go the legs. Uh, how many eyes does he have? He has three eyes. Is he happy? Is he sad? Is he angry? Okay, so I would draw this uh, monster. So that was my character build. And then with my young learners, I started to develop it a little more um, to try and in include some of the vocabulary, some of the structures that were useful to them. So things like what's his favorite sport, the monster's favorite sport? Um, can he play an instrument? What does he have for breakfast? And things like that. Now, obviously with teenagers, um, I don't really want to be drawing monsters. Um, I think they would find that a little childish. So I adapted it and, and started with a picture. So we have a picture here, and obviously normally in the classroom, I would be nominating students to this. So I would be saying, okay, Ahmed, how old is he? Usman, where does he live? Okay, I'm not gonna nominate because I'm sure everybody has lots of ideas that they want to share. So in the chat, um, how, how old is he? And where does he live? What's his name? Does he work or is he a student? Okay, 30 seconds to jot those ideas. Okay, so going for early to mid to late 20s, fantastic. Oh, 17, very good. He's a student yoga practitioner, nice idea. He lives in Spain, he likes climbing. He's a student, an artist, a dancer. Fantastic. He's very athletic, yep. Okay. He's at his parents' house. He lives with his parents. Lovely. He lives in India. Excellent. OK, so again, you know, lots of opportunities for students to be creative. And again, there, there are no wrong answers. If they said he was 70, I might go, hmm, he's looking very good for his age. Um, but they've got the, the freedom to be a little bit creative with these ideas. OK, but there is another stage. OK, so next slide, please, Paul. So building on this idea, we can also take it a step further and we can build the character even more. And this is a really nice opportunity to practice different grammatical structures or different lexical sets as well. So for example, um, some grammatical points that we've got here, we've got, again, thinking about the future, um, we've got the past, We've got language of routines and we've got these dependent uh, prepositions for the adjectives. OK, so choose one of the questions and write me something about the guy in the chat. Thanks, Ulita. He's preparing for, for the idol competition. I'm guessing that's like... Um, Britain's Got Talent or mm, X Factor, something like that. He drinks coffee three times a day. Milk and cereal for breakfast with orange juice. He likes Barry, the TV show. I like Barry as well. He's afraid of snakes. Oh, very good. Later, he'll do a meditation. He went to Paris last week. Lovely. Um, he's meeting his friends. He gets up at 2 p.m. Wow. Does he have a late night as well? Other people say he wakes up at 5 a.m. Oh, afraid of failure. Very good. L he lives on coffee and he's an extremist. Uh, he's an instructor teaching young learners. Lovely. Fantastic. OK, so obviously it, when you're doing this with your students in the class, you can give them a set of the questions 
that you you want them to use. Um, I would use it and focus on a particular grammatical point, particularly with lower level teams. Obviously, when you get to higher levels, you can throw in a mix of different grammar points. Um, but it's a really nice opportunity to go around, monitor the students and ask those follow up questions. So if somebody says he gets up at 2 p.m., say, oh, does he have a late night? You know, is he working? Does he have a job that finishes late? Is he lazy? Um, and I think as well, when we respond to students' ideas, it gives them validation. OK, um, because we want them to feel confident, we want them to be creative. I think if if somebody says he gets up at 2 p.m. and and your response is no, surely he gets up at 8 a.m. Um, you kind of dampen their spirits a little bit. If you're responsive to their ideas and you ask them for more information and you show interest, I think that's really motivating for all of our teams. Fantastic. Okay, one last thing. He's an early riser, has a full healthy breakfast and only has coffee in the morning. He sounds fantastic. Okay, um, right. Next slide, please, Paul. So the next activity that we're going to do is a guided visualization. And in the survey, uh, I gave you a choice of three. I said the beach, the shops, or a rocky close-up. Uh, and the beach was the winner. So we're going to be doing that in a minute. When you get the handout, um, I've included some links to some ideas, some, not really scripts, but some ideas for, for other visualizations that you can use as well. Um, one thing I will say is, if you don't mind, fingers away from the keyboard for a couple of minutes, because the idea of a guided visualization is that it's very internal, okay? So you don't want things pinging, you don't want messages popping up, you don't wanna be distracted looking at the chat, okay? And as well, if you want to, feel free to close your eyes whilst we're doing this guided visualization. So I'd like you to imagine you're standing on the beach. Are you looking at the sea? Are you looking up or down the beach? Are you looking at what's happening behind you? What can you see around you? Are you alone on the beach? Are you with a friend, with a family member? Are there other people around? What can you hear around you? Perhaps there are birds flying overhead or walking along the beach. Perhaps you can hear the waves. What does the sea sound like? Is it a calm day? It's stormy. Can you smell anything? Maybe you can smell the salt on the sea air. Take off your socks and shoes. What does the ground feel like beneath your toes? Is it sandy? Is it soft sand? Are there pebbles? Is it sharp? Imagine you walk down to the water and dip your toes into the sea. How does the water feel? Is it cold and refreshing? Does it send chills up your spine? What's the weather like? Is it hot and sunny? Can you feel the sun on your face? Maybe there's a light breeze blowing along the, along the beach. And how do you feel right now? Okay, when you're ready, you can open your eyes. 
And then obviously the next stage of this would be for learners to be in pairs and to be telling each other about their experience. OK, I won't get you to write everything because this is the sort of activity that can have students talking and talking and talking um, with weaker students. You might want to put questions on the board to support them. If you do put questions on the board to help them, I would suggest not putting them in a list, but dotting them around the board, because when questions are in a list, students work through them in a very linear fashion. But when they're dotted around, they approach them in a much more natural, organic way. They see a question that, that they're interested in and they respond to that question. OK, and that gives them a very different experience when they're describing what they imagined. OK, <laughs> thank you for all the comments about my calm voice. Uh, if we can jump to the next slide, it's one of the key factors for a guided visualisation. The idea is that you bring the students into a very relaxed state. Um, so that they can really visualize things in their head. Okay, so that's why, you know, no background noise, no cars outside. Um, speaking slowly as well to really give them the time to think about those questions that you're asking them. And also it's important to grade your language. Um, I admit I said, uh, I think I said, um, when you dipped your feet in the water, maybe it sent chills up your spine. That's not the sort of language I would use if I was doing this with my students. You want them to be so relaxed that no word is jarring when you're asking your questions. OK, because if you ask the students a question and, and they don't know a word, they automatically get jolted. OK, so very simple, very graded language, very short questions as well trying to bring in all of the senses. Some are obviously easier than others. Smell and taste tend to be the trickier too, depending on what the situation is. Um, for example, when you're in the shopping centre, the one you can see on the handout that I can see Melissa shared, um, that, you know, that's an easy one for smell because when you're in a shopping centre, all of the shops are throwing out these different scents to try and entice you to come in. So that, that's something that students can really respond to and really think about as well. Um, another point for you as a teacher, like I said, it's supposed to be a relaxed state. So find a point in the classroom and stay in that position because particularly as well, if students are closing their eyes, um, it, it can be quite unnerving to feel that somebody is moving around um, when when you don't know, um, you know, you assume it's the teacher, but again, very relaxed state. And finally, leading them out of the visualization gently as well. So this, okay, when you're ready, open your eyes and talk to your partner. Okay, rather than, okay, everybody, let's go. Uh, tell your partner what you imagined. Um, it's meant to be the whole experience of the guided visualization is is meant to be very, very relaxing. OK, fantastic. Thank you very much. So next slide, we've got a couple more activities before we finish. Right. This definitely maybe is one of my favorite activities of all time. It's so simple. It doesn't require any preparation by you. Um, and you can use it again and again and again and again and again. So the way it works in a minute, I'm going to tell you about my plans for the weekend. To make it a little simpler, I will say I'm going out for lunch and then I'm going to a craft fair. Okay. Before I speak, um, I'd like you to take one minute and can you write down not in the chat, write them down on a piece of paper. Five words you think I'm definitely going to say, and five words you think maybe I'll say. Okay, so my weekend plans, going out for lunch, uh, going to a craft fair, uh, my Saturday plans, okay, only Saturday. Uh, going out for lunch, going to a craft fair, five words you think I'll definitely say, 
five words you think maybe I'll say. These can be any type of words, nouns, adjectives, verbs, but nothing very obvious. Not, none of those kind of grammar words like I, the, um, uh. Okay, prepositions, nah. Okay, so we want content words. Okay, so uh, one minute, I'm going to drink some water. Five words, definitely. Five words, maybe. Just whilst you're writing, I'm going to catch up with some messages. Saha says, yep, yeah, use guided visualization as a pre-writing activity. Fantastic idea. And... Yep, yeah, lots of concentration when they're doing the guided visualization. Very true. 30 seconds to finish writing. Five words I'll definitely say, five words I'll maybe say. I'm not going to look at the chat because I can see some questions coming in, some, some words coming in and I don't want to use them. Oh, okay, I think obviously my students, I would give them more time to prepare for this activity. Um, if you've got uh, some words it doesn't matter if you haven't got five and five not to worry but we'll we'll jump on okay so everybody ready to listen whilst i'm talking tick the words that i say you only need to tick them once and if i say a word uh any form of the word is okay so if i say travel and you've written traveling or traveled give it a tick okay so this weekend, uh, well, Saturday, tomorrow, um, I'm going to go by train to another town to, um, to go out for lunch with my husband. Um, there's a really nice area that we like um, with a craft beer place, brewery, um, and some restaurants around. And you can sit at the brewery and you can order food from the different restaurants so we we like going there because there's a bit more variety um and then we're going to walk from the the place where we're having lunch back down through the town and we're going to visit a craft fair that is happening um apparently it happens once a month i haven't been before uh i've read that there are maybe 30 different stalls different artists um sharing things um, and so I'm really excited. I love going to craft fairs um, because I think it's really inspiring to see what people can make with with what they have. Um, and then we'll probably get the train back home and um, I don't know. And, and then at some point go to bed and go to sleep. OK, so you've now got some ticks. You get two points for every word in the definitely column and one point for every word in the maybe column. Okay, so that could give you a potential total of 15 points. So if you want to tot up your score, add up your score, so five points in the definitely column, uh, sorry, two points for every word in the definitely column, one point in the maybe column. Excellent, Tao got six points. Fantastic, two points, two points. Sorry, Roy, sorry, Tien. Yep, um, another two from Ulita. Yep, uh, zero, oh, I'm so sorry. I should have given you more time to think. Um, and admittedly as well, it was quite a vague topic. Um, you can make it obviously much closer, much more uh, concise by saying, okay, tell me about your favorite sport. It's football. Tell me about it. Um, OK, so then that gives uh, students a bit bit more opportunity to get the get some words. Um, so a couple of reasons I love this. First of all, it gives a student the opportunity to, again, have that long term. And they're talking about something that's personal to them. It's related to them. They feel comfortable thinking about talking about that topic, partly because 
when you have this prediction phase where the students are writing in the columns, that student has time to start thinking about what they're going to say. Uh, another reason that I love it is everybody else has to listen while the student is talking. I think sometimes it's very easy for students to get distracted and start thinking about other things, but they have this list. They've got this list of 10 words. They need to be listening attentively to, to attentively to, to see if they can get those ticks. You can also get students to ask a question to see if they can elicit one of the words that they have that they haven't had a tick next to. OK, this is quite a good one for higher levels, because obviously at lower levels, students sometimes lack the 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 level to think about how to phrase a question to elicit a word they tend to put the missing word in the question so say that I didn't say restaurant a question could be did you go to a restaurant and I would say yes and I wouldn't say the word so they couldn't get the tick okay great some four points coming through there as well very good um, and I use this as a filler. Um, I used to use it and keep a track of which student had spoken each time and students were always keen to participate. It only takes five minutes at the end of the lesson. So it's a nice filler to have on your hands. OK, we've got one more quick activity to do. So next slide, please, Paul. This one, again, is a nice filler to do at the end of the lesson. Missing letter sentences. Um, this. I'm going to say there could be a wrong answer, but students really enjoy this activity. Um, so, you know, it's it's a great, great activity that they they kind of it gets them thinking. So I'd like you to write a sentence about this picture, but you can't use the letter T. OK, get typing in the chat. So a sentence about this picture, but you can't use the letter T. A group of young people, fabulous friends having fun. Some friends are walking down a road. Very good. Excellent. Great. So we've got some some sentences coming in. You're all doing very well. Somebody always tends to put in a the or a they or a it accidentally. Kids are walking, having fun. Five friends walking close. I think I missed that one. I think that might have been close to home, but maybe it wasn't. OK, very good. So we'll try another one. Next slide, please, Paul. This time, again, a sentence about this picture, but there's going to be two things no letter E and you must use the past simple. Hmm. So if you can't use the letter E, but you must use the past simple, that's all of your regular verbs out the window. Hmm. Get your thinking caps on. Looking happy, all green tree ease in there. And don't forget as well, we're trying to make a sentence. So we need kind of subject, a verb, uh, the end of the sentence. Two boys had a laugh, fantastic. Who was that? Gajinda, very good. Was it Gajinda? No, oh, it's gone too quick. Juliana, fantastic. Okay, Brian Lott stood by a column. That was Gajinda. Very good. Excellent. Two boys are laughing hard. Excellent. <laughs> Very good. So this is an example, giggling over an inside joke. We've got those E's in the, in the inside in the joke. And students as well, you know, they, they get so excited about writing sentences, they forget the letters. OK, and you can make it even more complicated by saying that you have to have a certain number of words as well. So a minimum of six words or something like that. Um, so, yeah, a really nice filler to get students thinking. Just show them any picture. Um, 
the, the letters that work particularly well are kind of vowels and those high frequency consonants like T. Um, and in terms of getting them to think more critically, things like no letter E and the past simple is a great one because they have to use a, an irregular verb. There are some combinations that obviously don't work. So you couldn't say present continuous and no letter G. That doesn't work. So you do have to think a little bit about what you're going to get them to, to use or not use. Um, but yeah, really lovely activity gets them having a bit of a laugh, being a bit creative again, and gives them the confidence to, to use a variety of language. OK, thank you very much. Next slide, Paul. And this is my last slide. So thank you all so much for listening. Um, I hope you've come away with some ideas that you can use. Um, you can find me, as Paul mentioned at the beginning, I run um, a little online group called the TEFL Development Hub. So if you go to Facebook and search for that, you can find me there. Um, and also feel free to connect on LinkedIn. Uh, I think I'm the only, oh, I spelled my own name wrong. Rookie mistake, Teresa Bestwick. Oh dear. Brilliant, thanks everyone. <clears throat> and we'll see if there are any questions that have come in. Thanks, Teresa. That was great. Really enjoyed that, especially my uh, my role as slide mover. You, you did such a fantastic job. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank <laughs> you. So honored. <laughs> um right questions there are a few uh so i'm gonna kind of rush through uh also you can have a little look as well if there's any in there that you particularly want to have a look at um let's have a look uh would you okay start with the first one um from amir would you focus on accuracy during the imagination stage of the storytelling section and if so immediate or delayed Really good question, Amir. So generally, a lot of these activities I would use to focus more on fluency, um, because obviously the students will be talking to each other and sharing their ideas. Um, but I think it is an opportunity to be monitoring the students. And just if you hear anything, do feel free to kind of go, oh, one thing you might want to think about is da da da. Um, uh, but yeah, generally, lots of work on fluency, I think, to help increase that confidence with them. Great. Um, 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 uh, See, we're doing that, the next one, she's asked about the level. Yeah. Um, mm. So I think generally all of these activities you could adapt from, you know, kind of A2 all the way up to C1. It's very much about grading the language, thinking about the type of questions that you're asking the students. For example, when, when you do the character build, um, obviously for A1, it can be very simple things what's his favorite color what does he have for breakfast and then you could get right up to what's something he wished he had done when he was younger um to to bring in that more more advanced grammar structures mm -hmm. okay um i'm cool um, 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 uh it's got a couple of questions here uh i just want to look at the the second one actually um so it says these activities seem to encourage and cultivate students speaking skills uh, we can pre-teach Lexus beforehand, but how do we deal with words that students don't know, but they need to express their ideas? Yes. So this is a really good point as well. So, for example, when you do the guided visualization, uh, I think that's a really lovely activity because when students are imagining, they don't need any vocabulary. You know, all it is is pictures. But then when you're doing that stage where they're talking to your to their partner, that again that's the opportunity for you to be going around and looking for opportunities for emergent language so if you if you and often you can see on their faces you can see that kind of confused look of oh, how, how do you say it? okay so definitely get being available being ready and I think as well another thing about building confidence with teens is it helps to build their confidence in you and so they feel much more confident and comfortable asking you for questions and asking you for vocabulary and not feeling like oh god I should know this word and I don't and now the teacher is going to be angry at me okay so yeah it's all about building rapport building confidence and, and making students feel happy in their classes great thank you for that Fraser. um question from Ahmad uh this is sort of around fast finishes so if you've got something like for the definitely maybe activity is the one that he said what would you suggest to do 
for fast finishers i mean more more generally do you have like a sort of a a bag but a, a series of activities that you can kind of get people who finish quickly to to do the one thing um as well is always try to have kind of some core questions that you want students to answer and then some kind of extra questions that if they get to them great and if they mm -hmm. don't not to worry um another little hack is always kind of getting them to reflect on themselves so for example um say they were doing the the picture activity um so they've talked about their picture the other person talked about their picture and then just pop a question on the board like do you ever find yourself in this situation how do you think the people are feeling how do you feel when you do this so always having a bank of questions is is my go-to for fast finishes one thing I will say as well for the definitely maybe um uh, one of my friends she added a definitely not column so that could be an extra for your fast finishes so really you want the students to be listening out for words they are going to hear Mm -hmm. but if you've got these strong students as well think get them thinking about the you know five words they definitely won't say um and then again creativity they come up with incredible words to, to add to that column mm -hmm. okay great thank you Teresa. hopefully that answers your question um, 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 um uh and i've seen a question about online classes from mrs caratas so she oh. said how do you think these brilliant activities can be adapted for online private classes i just love them so want to implement them in my lessons so i think a lot of these you can do and then have students go into the breakout rooms to be discussing in pairs um if you're talking about one-to-one -one lessons a lot of them as well work fine one-to-one -one. you know if you're in a one-to-one -one lesson you're talking to your student a lot anyway so they already feel comfortable um having conversations with you mm -hmm. um the with the images you can send students an image in the chat um or you know have it on screen i think now on zoom you can project your screen from mm -hmm. the main room as long as you're not monitoring mm -hmm. that's one problem because obviously you want to be going around and listening to the students as well but i think there are definitely ways that you can bring these elements or adapt them slightly and and be doing them online as well mm -hmm. There's a couple of there's a few questions around sort of multi-level or beginner level. I mean, to me, when I was sort of listening to you talking about these activities, I was I was sort of thinking that because I know it's a question that comes up and they all seem to kind of work or would work particularly well with with multi-level classes or with low-level classes. I mean, it's really just about the language that they've got and using the language they've got and and kind of um it's more about the creativity side of it. Is that would would you sort of yeah. Yeah, and I think as well, doing activities like these with lower levels, um, it does just, like you say, they use the language that they have. Mm. Um, but it, again, it gives them that confidence that, you know, I can say something and it's validated and nobody will laugh at me if I say, in my picture, the girl has purple hair. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, that's what the activity is. They can make a sentence and it can be incorrect. Mm -hmm. Okay. And also just, um, I suppose, with lower, let's thinking about lower levels as well, or multi-level multi classes, with L1, are you, where do you sort of stand on them if, if they can't think of a word or if they're doing an activity and they really want to sort of say something but they can't think of the word? And are you are you happy for them to use their, their own language and then explore that later or is that? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think, you know, for things like the guided visualisation, as I say, they'll they often get so engaged and so engrossed mm. in telling their partner about the the what they imagined that when they don't know a word they say it in their l1 if it's a, a monolingual class they tend to mm. just say it in their l1 because they know the other person knows it and then they carry on back in english again mm. um so that can be handy you know getting them to think as well i mean you could incorporate a stage after the guided visualization before they share where they kind of revisit the visualization and make a note of key vocabulary that they're going to need and then that could be an opportunity then for them to ask for what's missing mm -hmm. okay fantastic thank you Teresa. um we've kind of run out of time i know there are more questions but i think we've kind of hopefully covered um most of those um so we're going to stop there but really just to say thank you ever so much Teresa, for 
for fantastic ideas and also for trusting me with your slides and um and thank you to everyone uh who's been joining us and for taking part and your comments it's, it's been it's been great it's felt really interactive i think so um so thanks ever so much for that um thank you trace i'm just going to stop there.